Welcome New Hope Central Oahu Ohana. I want to welcome you to our services this weekend and it is a bittersweet moment for all of us here at our campus because we are saying uh, farewell but in Hawaii we never say farewell it's always a hui ho until we see each other again and we wanted to say uh, uh, on behalf of the uh, church the uh, Higas here we wanted to say thank you so much Bops for being such an integral part of our church Ohana and being here for even if it's a short time you made a difference in our lives just by your presence and uh, we wanted to also thank you so much for your generosity in allowing us to use a garage for a couple of years <laughs> to house our sound equipment that was huge for us mm -hmm. and uh, you won't get to see the building up of our building but once it's done you'll see it and hopefully you'll come back and be a part of that uh, as you visit back where you want to be here again right Kara mm, for sure yes yeah, so uh, <laughs> go ahead Rick you want to share yeah, yes um, I'd like to say um, New Hope Ohana Thank you so much for all your, your uh, wonderful care and support. Uh, we've grown uh, a lot through the, um, the, the preaching and the teaching there at uh, New Hope. And we are very appreciative of all the wonderful love and uh, generosity everyone has shown us while we've been here for our three years. We're very thankful for our stay there. And we know that if we don't meet again, we'll certainly meet each other in heaven. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it is with heavy heart that we say goodbye. Um, even though we're going to Maryland and it's a new adventure and we're excited, um, we are painfully aware that we, we have to say goodbye to our church family. So I will just leave it with, I will see you again. Yes. And God bless our New Hope family. Yes, yes. And uh, Kara, uh, we know that we'll miss you as well. You'll be uh, eventually going back to... Uh, uh, Grand Canyon University, you'll be taking online classes in the fall, but we will surely miss you all. So, um, New Earth, uh, Hope, Ohana, let's just pray right now and welcome the Lord's presence as we get ready for worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are uh, so grateful for your presence. We thank you so much that because you're Heavenly Father and we are your children, you're always with us, always, and we can be family no matter how many miles we're apart. And so we thank you again for the Bops and their, uh, Lord, their presence in our lives. Bless them, Lord, as they now go to their new assignment. And right now, Lord, we choose to worship you with all our hearts right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And here we go. Hi, church. Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday service. We're super happy and thankful that you could join us today. Um, we're about to enter into a time of worship, so we just ask that you finish whatever you're doing. Make your way into a comfortable place as we get ready to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
this morning. Would you just join me in acknowledging the presence of the Lord? Heavenly Father, we just right now in this moment acknowledge and embrace your presence with us. Even as we worship you in spirit and truth, we just invoke the presence of God right now in every household, to every ohana, every person that is watching right now. Because of Jesus, we have access to your presence. And our God is like a heavenly father. He is our heavenly father. And he bends and he kneels down before his children and he throws his arms around us to defend us and to protect us. And he is gracious to us and he lifts his face toward us so we can see us face to face and eye to eye. Such is our God. That's his heart for us. And the result is we'll receive his shalom peace because of his love poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let me pray that for you in the original Hebrew. Yevarechacha Adonai veishmerecha Yair Adonai pana velecha vichunecha Isa Adonai, 
פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. Well, if you remember the Bean House family, right, Jeff and Helen and the kids, well, they had an amazing weekend this past weekend. Watch this. Aloha, and welcome to New Hope Central Oahu Online. My name is Pastor Rich, and I'm so glad you found us today, especially if this is your very first time. One of the things we invite you to do is to fill out our online connection card. It's an easy and simple way for you to find out more information about the church and its ministries, and it also helps us learn about you and your family. It's also an opportunity for all of us to fill out a prayer request or praise report about what God's been doing in your life. Now, there is some exciting news to share with you. And the first is that our very own Pastor Earl was in the news, and it's a good thing. Uh, one of the things that he's been working so hard on is the pigeon translation of the Bible. And Hawaii News Now did a segment on it, and I wanted to share that with everybody right now. Check it out. So much, Dad. A new local version of the good book is hot off the press, a Bible written entirely in pigeon. Hmm. The one in charge take care of his people. One David kind song for God. The one in charge, he take care of me. Just like the sheep guy take care of his sheep. Pastor Earl Morihara and about 30 other people worked on the good and special book. It took them 30 years to translate the scriptures into pigeon. They worked the last 20 years on the Old Testament. We didn't want just a great translation, you know, to be sitting on a, a shelf somewhere. We wanted it to be, you know, dog-eared and um, written up where people are using it, crying on it, um, reaching their soul. To me, the legacy is if one person can come into the kingdom because of the publication of the good and special book, we've hit the home run. Well, 7,500 copies hit stores in September. Now the Pigeon translators are working on an audio version. Awesome, Pastor Earl. We are so proud of you. And we know that this is the culmination of years of work, and it continues with the audio Bible. So we are following your, your work with great expectation and are excited to see what God's doing in your life. Secondly, another thing that we get to celebrate is that the Aloha teams in Wahiwa had a fantastic food distribution on Friday. And we got some footage back just to see what they've all been doing. And as you can see, lots of people were able to come and to get their needs met because of the donations that you were able to provide. And so they were getting things like eggs and food and getting prayer. And, and you can see the line of cars stretched out the parking lot. So thank you so much for giving for what the Aloha Teams is doing as we try to help people through this pandemic crisis and be able to cope with some of their basic needs like food and prayer and community. All right, well, this is the portion of our service where we continue in worship through giving. And it's an opportunity for those of us who consider this our home church to give as God has led us to. Now, if you're here for the very first time, we want you to just relax and enjoy this service. Consider it our gift to you. But if you do consider New Hope Central Oahu as your home church, there's three ways that you can give. One is using the give buttons right here on this website. Secondly, you can hit the give with push pay button in the upper right hand corner of nhcohawaii.org. Or you can text to give by texting the letters NHCO to the number 77977 and follow the prompts. All right, let's pray for the offering. Father God, thank you for this church. And Lord, thank you for this 
uh, amazing community of people, Lord, who are seeking to honor you in every aspect of their lives. And Father, Lord, you're giving us influence. You're giving us impact. And Lord, the more this world tries to suppress the church, Lord, the more you lift it up because it's a community of people that lift you up. So Father, thank you for that, that privilege, God. And Lord, we just ask that we would continue to lift you up as a community, as individuals in the way that we conduct ourselves. And Lord, that you would have an impact throughout the world because of it. Lord, these gifts that we give now, Lord, use them to multiply your kingdom. Do something amazing that only you can do, something eternal. And God, we will give you all the praise as we partner with you in impacting this world for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Well, now is the time where we're going to continue in our Breaking Point series with Pastor Lori Shimabukuro, who's going to bring us the second in the message series titled Inside Out. on our home and how crazy it was. There were boxes everywhere and everything was covered in plastic. And those things that weren't covered in plastic, well, they were covered in dust. It was an interesting time and an interesting season for us because we, we couldn't afford to live outside. So what we ended up doing was actually staying in the house while all the construction was going on. And I can tell you, during that time, it was trying. There was tension that would come. We had to stay out in a, a tent. Most of our days were spent out in the tent. But in the beginning, it felt like camping. But after a while, the luster of that kind of just disappeared. There was tension that was building up in our home. And there was tension, in, and even though the people were great, there were times when I felt like, geez, I'm not so sure. Was this worth it? Was this what we're supposed to do? And nearly a year later, the, the renovations were done. And I can't tell you how great it was to have it completed. And then once completed, to be able to sit and enjoy with our family. And it was a realization that it wasn't the actual houses, you know, the house that was being renovated. It was actually the journey on the way of that being finished. That was really what was supposed to happen. So we were able to stay the course. And in the process of that, realize the blessings that the Lord was giving us in the, in the time. I share this because we are all in a season of change, otherwise known as trials and challenges. There will be times when we may want to bail. The word for today, if you learn or hear nothing else, is stay the course. Could you say that with me? Stay the course. Like how we had a plan for our home, God has a plan for each of us. The plan for our home came together because we chose to stay the course. While it may not seem possible or even relevant, staying the course will keep you hanging in and hanging on until God's work is completed. In fact, James tells us that. He says, and I'm paraphrasing, stay until your endurance is fully developed. You will be perfect and complete. It is tempting in times like these to make foolish choices, not only to quit, but to give into desires. Can you say desires? How many of us know there are God desires, those things that God wants for us, for our lives, and they may come as a thought or a prompting for our lives, like a deeper relationship with Him, our God. Then there's those desires that come from within, those that will satisfy fleshly wants and even what appears to be fleshly needs. Desires will either come from one of two places, our faith in God or our own personal fears. So now let's do some wordplay on this word that will prayerfully help us to pause before acting out on those desires and also help us to discern where those desires come from. 
desires. Let's take that. Take the D and take the sires. Sire is a word or another word for king or the one in charge. So each time you have a desire, do this. Would you ask yourself two questions? The first, who is the king of that desire? Is it you or is it the true king, God? Then the second question, what is that desire satisfying? Is it a temptation and or fear? Perhaps the need for recognition, money, pride, fear of not having enough, fear of missing out, fear of letting someone else down. Or is it a God want for your life? Consider, does what you want agree with his word? Ask, does the desire satisfy a greater godly vision that involves more than just you? Why is this so important? Because an ungodly desire does not match with a godly vision. Let me say that again. An ungodly desire does not match with a godly vision. And an ungodly desire left unchecked our hearts will actually move toward that desire, toward that temptation, and it will un undermine our faith. It happened with Adam and Eve. An ungodly desire led them into an ungodly decision, which then led them to be cast out of the garden and the blessings of communion with God. So how can we tell a godly desire versus an ungodly desire? Simply put, we ask God. <laughs> Perhaps not so simple is living it out. Good news, James offers instruction and a way for us to test those desires and make sense and may help us make this idea even more tangible. James will share in chapters 1 verses 6 to 8, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from God. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. That divided loyalty between God and the world is also described as being double-minded. It'd be like me being a vegetarian and still eating a steak. It doesn't quite work together. Back in the late 1880s, Robert Louis Stevenson would pen a work called The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The story is about Dr. Jekyll, a well-respected, level-headed, religious man of the community, known to be kind and charitable, who becomes Mr. Hyde, a self-serving, selfish, cruel alter ego who allows his desires to take control. This is an awesome illustration of what happens when someone who is double-minded, Dr. Jekyll, wants to be well-respected and yet partake in the desires that would negate that very respect and the station that he held. And what he does through a number of different and unexpected twists is he loses control. So that Mr. Hyde now takes over and in the end kills Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll became double-minded between what he knows was God and being proper and his fleshly desires. And it led him to do. So how do we resist becoming double-minded? Number one, stay the course in God's plan and vision. Number two, ask the questions. Check who is king of your desire and ask what does that desire satisfy? And then third, know that God will bless you but never tempt you. Sometimes in the middle of a trial, we get these weird ideas, these weird thoughts that God is actually punishing us or tempting us to failure. <laughs> Let's be honest, we can get angry and frustrated at God, but that is never his plan. Temptation is never a part of his plan. James 1, 12 to 17 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. 
Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Make no mistake, God will never tempt you. Satan will, but God, no. He will use every situation, meaning God will use every situation for his good purpose to grow you and those around you. But he will never, he will never tempt you. God operates on our faith in him. We have to know that Satan is a liar who will operate on our fears. Fear creates fleshly desires to satisfy fleshly needs. Those desires oftentimes will become so immediate that it will cause you to make a quick decision in a moment. Don't fall for it. Rather, lean on God. He is with you in the midst of temptation and every step of the way. You've got to know that He is contending for you. Resist the enemy. The word says resist the enemy and the darkness will flee. <laughs> Oftentimes, we're not sure what that means. Let me tell you what it means. It means simply this, lean on God. Some of you may say, but I tried that. And the trials and the temptations get worse. Yep. Lean on God. But you don't understand. The temptation is so much and so great. Uh-huh. Stay the course and lean on God. James shares in chapter 1, those desires, when acted upon, those decisions made will lead to sin. Rather than move, would you pause? Would you stay the course? Would you ask the questions? And then know that God will never tempt you. So lean on Him. The Hitachi tree became popular in the 1970s when the Hitachi company adopted it as its logo. Did you know that this tree resides in Moanalua Gardens? They did this because the Hitachi tree, otherwise known as the monkey paw tree, illustrated the breadth and reach and strength of their company. While it is quite impressive, what I found most impressive about this tree is that its leaves close to darkness at night and open to the sun. This morning, would you let that tree be a reminder for us to close ourselves off to the darkness and the dark desires and open to those things of the sun. So that like the Hitachi tree in God, we can stand strong with resilience and strength to inspire and change the world. You know, this morning, you have a chance to lean on God. And all you need to do is to receive Him into your heart and say, God, I want to lean on you. For some of us, this is the first time we will profess this. For others, we may need to tell him again that we want to lean on you, God. So we open our hearts and our lives to you. Would you join me and let's just pray that prayer. We say, Lord, would you open our hearts and would you open our lives to you, Father God, that we would lean on you and lean on you alone. We say, Lord, take every single temptation, every sin of the past, and would you receive it and draw us close to you that we would stay the course that you have set before us. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you would just continue to pour out your blessings, not just uh, on those individuals that are speaking these words, Father, but would you enter into every single home, Father God. Fill every single inch of that household, Father, with your spirit, Father, to overflowing, Lord. That these lives, Father, would not remain the same, Lord, but would be changed, not for the moment, not for the day, Lord, but for all eternity. Lord, we praise you. We say, you be Lord. We thank you that you are Savior. And we say, all glory be to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we say, amen.
Now, wasn't that a great message, an inspiring message from Pastor Laurie? And I hope we can all ask the Holy Spirit to give us His desires and say no to our fleshly desires. And from the Higas and the Bobs who were in Ohana together, we want to say from our Ohana to yours, Aloha and have a great week. We as followers of Christ face a breaking point when we surrender our lives to the Lord. This week's message is entitled, White Flag. Now in a worldly context, white flag would symbolize a form of surrender with defeat. But as believers, we look at the world through a kingdom perspective, and that changes everything. Because the white flag now goes from defeat to victory. Victory over sin, victory over death, and a victory that allows us to take hold of an eternal life with Jesus Christ. Now that we've surrendered our lives to the Lord though, what does it mean to be a real Christian? I believe that as Christians, we should not only accept, understand, and know the Word of God with our minds, but we need to believe it in our hearts, because it is what's in our hearts that will be made manifest in our lives. True Christianity comes from faith and action, and it is through our actions that we transform into the likeness of Christ. Hey, my name is Micah, and join us next week as we continue in our series, Breaking Point.
New Hope Spark, the online ministries of New Hope Central Oahu. Everything was just covered in dust. Is that okay? Covered in dust. Covered in dust. And everything was just covered in dust. Stop. You want to stop? You don't know where to look, do you? No, the entire. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> the plan for our home came together. The plan for our home came okay, together. But I don't want you laughing into that line. <laughs> okay. okay, so pick it up just for one line back. Mm. Okay. Okay. Hey, the course. I don't know where. All of a sudden, it's like four sisters. Course is a course of course. Of course. <laughs> well, uh, mm. <laughs> the sires. Let me ask you this. Sire is well. Let me tell you this. <laughs> Shucks. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to stop the prompter. Like, okay. wait, the words are going. Hang on, someone's here. Hi. Oh, hey, hi. Um. So this is Pastor Rich, Hi. and this Hi. is David. This is Mike Yamamoto. He was baptized this week. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. James shares in chapters one. <laughs> ah, it's about Dr. Jekyll, a well-respected, level of well-respected by Oriental. Well all of a sudden, <laughs> I think you've had a little too much, Lori. <laughs> Okay, anytime you're ready. <laughs> 